FTX um, invested $5.6 billion in FTX ventures. They must have spent another $2 billion in marketing and, and the, or more in the two years. So they poured about $7.5 billion into the economy and they did it by, in essence, counterfeiting $10 billion or more worth of tokens like FTT and, and SRM. And they boosted Solana and you know, they boosted Maps. And then they went and they borrowed real money you know, they borrowed as much as they could, posting that collateral from counterparties that, you know, like the, they borrowed from BlockFi and, you know, borrowed from Voyager and probably borrowed from Three Arrows. Or they borrowed from anybody that would have made um, a loan to them. And, uh, and then they borrowed from their own depositors at FTX. And of course, they then raised billions of dollars from outside investors. And they took all that money and they, and they, in essence, corrupted everybody they could, right? So you give 45 million to block, right? $45 million to, what, a handful of journalists? Welcome to Interweb Coins, where we cover crypto, the economy, and the people that influence it. We're here to lift the clouds, pull back the curtain, and give you a leg up in the world of crypto. This video is jam-packed with value. So if you're committed to the crypto space, we hope that you stay with us until the end what could go wrong, you know, $15 million <laughs> to, you know, to one influencer who will remain nameless that everybody knows, and, you know, and then, and then you give it to every politician on both sides of the aisle, and then you give it to all of the academics. I, I think it'll be probably three to five years before we know the extent of that corrupt money. But I, th you know, I don't think that there are many people that, that weren't tainted. They went to pretty much every crypto influencer, every journalist, every politician, every entrepreneur, everybody that they, every educator, everyone that would take their money. Michael Saylor is an American entrepreneur, businessman, and the CEO of MicroStrategy Incorporated, a publicly traded business intelligence company. He's known for his advocacy of Bitcoin as a store of value and has been a prominent figure in the cryptocurrency space. In an interview with CNBC on December 8th, it was revealed that Kevin O'Leary made a $4.3 million profit from his FTX investment. Despite this, he publicly claims to be angry about losing money on the exchange. FTX is a cryptocurrency exchange that was launched in 2019 with its headquarters in the Cayman Islands. With its headquarters in the Cayman Islands, it has quickly established itself as one of the leading platforms in the crypto space. One of the key features of FTX is its advanced trading interface which provides users with a wealth of tools and resources to help make educated trading decisions. Before its collapse, the giant crypto exchange offered a basket of trading products and services, including futures, options, and spot trading. However, the truth would come out after its downfall in 2022. According to the bankruptcy filing, many big names were involved in the FTX saga, including Kevin O'Leary, who lost $15 million in investment in FTX. The amount is divided between what was given to him as part of his compensation for appearing as a paid spokesperson and his initial investment in the exchange. Traditional venture investing typically involves a fund or individual investing their funds in a business. The figures indicate that the famous Shark Tank TV star has also poured in $1 million in equity and also held $9.7 million worth of crypto on the exchange. O'Leary was also paid $15 million by FTX and has previously been open about this FTX role. However, O'Leary never disclosed the sums FTX was paying him. In an interview, Saylor said that O'Leary and many other influencers lured viewers into getting involved with FTX. On the other hand, FTX was showering influencers with millions of dollars to earn their endorsement. Football star Tom Brady, companies under the control of New England Patriots Robert Kraft, and crypto firms BlackRock, Coinbase, Lightspeed Venture Partners, Pantera Ventures, and Tezos Foundation are also among the names included in documents filed in Delaware Bankruptcy Court as holders of FTX stock. According to the filings, Brady held 1,144,861 in common stock, while supermodel, businesswoman, and Brady's ex-wife, Giselle Budichin, had 686,761. The former couple once served as ambassadors for FTX after taking equity stakes in the company in June 2021. 
politicians were also involved in the FTX saga. For instance, more than one in three of the 535 senators and representatives in the U.S. Congress showed up to the new session with FTX baggage, having received campaign support from one of the senior executives of the infamous crypto colossus. Among the banks that were struck by the exchange's collapse is crypto-centric bank Silvergate, which said its exposure to bankrupt lender Genesis had been limited. The bank made the announcement one day after Genesis filed for bankruptcy, and three days after Silvergate said the cryptocurrency industry's ongoing downturn had led to a $1 billion loss. The company said that Silvergate's deposit relationship with Genesis was less than $2.5 million as of both December 31, 2022 and January 19, 2023. Although FTX's downfall weighed down heavily on several crypto firms and even cryptocurrencies, pushing Bitcoin and other digital tokens to new lows, many countries are still embracing the technology. The United Arab Emirates Minister of State for Foreign Trade said that cryptocurrency will play a significant role in UAE trade going forward, and that the Middle Eastern country ensures global governance regarding cryptocurrencies and crypto companies. The implosion of FTX in November provoked intense calls from the community for greater transparency from crypto exchanges. Within weeks, five centralized exchanges completed their proof-of-reserve audits, while plenty announced plans to follow the same course. In conclusion, the dollar index is now below the 50-week moving average. This has not happened for the duration of the bear market. This is a strong signal for crypto bullish momentum. This reclaim of the 3-day 50 moving average is a very important signal to watch because it doesn't happen often you can see for the entire duration of the bear market we did not have it but once we got above it you can see go and look at this on the chart for yourself when we get these reclaims sure it can be a fake out but until we get back below it so you can see that's currently about 18,800 19,000 until we get back below that we have to assume that this could be a confirmation of a new multi-week or multi-month trend to the upside and this could go a lot higher than where it currently is with or without pullbacks from current levels. Of course, there's pullbacks along the way, but like I said earlier also, you have to, we have to wait and see where do those pullbacks happen from? Because we might get a decent pullback, but if you're waiting for that pullback all the way from 20,000 and it goes up to 25,000 or 28,000 before we get a major pullback, obviously that's not going to be optimal, right? We hope that we've provided you value today. If you feel compelled to reciprocate, please like or subscribe, as this helps us positively impact more people like you. If you have yet to get on an exchange or are interested in finding out where we buy our crypto from, check out the video description below. Using our top exchange section to sign up for an exchange can also support the channel. We hope you tune in for future videos.